see a, I see a line. And a dot. Oh, right. You know, lines are ever, forever. And then dots, infinite. <laughs> I see, I see, I see a white floor, huh? Yeah, Sebastian. Sebastian got that answer. All I see is abundance and opportunity. This was the world. That's all you have is abundance of opportunity and space. Most of us are always caught up in what you see. It's what you don't see that really makes all the difference. If y'all haven't met me before, I'm Nason to Life, and I've been in business for about six years now. And uh, we just actually opened up. I end up last year. Can everybody hear me all right? Mm -hmm. okay. um, just the end of last year. And I'm going to save y'all the speech of it's been, a, you know, the struggles, the trial and tribulations, the peaks and valleys, because at the end of the day, if you're living, you're going to go through it regardless. Right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go through it no matter what you do, no matter, even if we were making hats in here, if that's what we were doing. Trial and tribulation, it comes with the territory. You know, but a lot of things that we go through is what we don't understand is the sacrifices you have to make. You got to do that if you want to be successful. Uh, one of my internet uh, mentors said that success is defined by the results you get. Can we agree on that? That if you don't get <laughs> the goals you set, it, you know, it was based on the results you, you, you get. It's success. Um, Y'all mind if I sit down for a little bit? I'm just trying to relax. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. <laughs> um, so with that said, you know, what are you willing to sacrifice? What do you want? I think that's really like the biggest question people have to ask is like, what do you want out of the deal? You know, everybody wants the, the fame and the, every, the likes on Facebook or whatever, but behind that, do you know what's going on behind that? Do you know what it really means to be a boss. It's not, sometimes it's not all what it's cracked up to be for a lot of people. You know, once you really dig in deep, owning your own shop. What is, how's everybody feeling here about owning this shop? I'm with it. You with it? Yeah. What else? What else? What else? What other goals you guys have? Tor. Huh? Tor. Tor. Get sponsored. He's the only one. As what else? Is? I don't want him to be the only one talking. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? I know I'm not just talking to Sebastian. You're just over to my own shop. I'm not worried about boring. I don't want to be famous. I just want to Right. Be That's exactly. You know, it's everybody's perspective of what you want. You know, some people, like I said, the level of success, it's, it's all about what you want. And I think a lot of times we get caught up in the tour, but not understanding the, the sacrifice you have to make on that tour. Probably have to sacrifice your family or time or whatever. You know, that's a deep thing. Some people can't handle that. Some people want their family. You know, instead of following P. Diddy around, you know, God knows what. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that these are the things that people don't always uh, tend to, uh, you know, pay attention to. Um, a lot of what we do, actually, let me get some names in here. Can we start on this end right here? Papu. Papu. Excellent. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Regular dude. Regular dude. Do you have a three month goal? Who? Do you have a three month goal? Yeah. What's your three month goal? If you don't mind me asking. You know, staying on the right track. Better than myself. I'm just getting out of prison. I want to get out of prison. Oh. So, this was one of my three month goals. Now I'm trying to work on another. So, I'm staying on the right track. Oh, that's great. Papu. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sebastian, what's your three month goal? Three month goal? Yeah. Next three months from now? Yeah. Network as much as possible, get a copyright name, and get my shares and my fade in my phone. Yeah. It seems like it. you already working at a shop? No. No? I got a long way to go. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What you got your head in already? Right. I got it. What about my yeah. man? Yeah. What about my man? Right. Junior. Junior. We'll try to finish school in the next three months. Here? Try working at a shop. Yeah. Have you, have you, were you working, uh, cutting hair before? Uh, this is, you learned everything here? Yeah. With your peers? Yeah. I learned, yeah, I, I never did the peers like I was before. How old are you? 28. 28. What's up, man? Bird, same thing. Just want to get out of here, finish school, I'm on the spot. Right? 
Do you have any any idea like what is the, the first step of opening up your own spot? As far as what do you mean, there's a lot of different ideas in advertisement. Uh, location. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I mean, do you plan on getting out of school and then going to right into a barbershop situation? Or are you just right into a bar right out of school? Yes. Excellent. What's your name? Miguel. Miguel. Yeah. And I want to same thing. Get in a barbershop. Get in a barbershop to yeah. work, or you want to go right out and open a home barbershop? I need to fit in a barbershop. Excellent, excellent. Finish school, go to Chile. Go to where? Chile. Chile? Yeah, that's it. Going back to Chile? Yeah, pretty much. Chile. That's it? That's it. Open up your own spot, or just? I have to have the American styles that people want over there. Okay. Are you originally from here? Yeah, I'm from here, my wife's from here. Oh, that's actually smart. <laughs> hey, you in the back, my man. Ryan. Ryan. I, uh, my goal is just to open up my own shop. I put my, uh, my wife through school a few years ago. She was a stylist on Palm Beach Island. Okay. So my goal is just to get done and open up my shop with her. And, but my goal is to work in another shop first before I open my own. Right. I don't want to be a crash test dummy. Right. <laughs> right, right, exactly. What about my man? Adar. Who's that, Edgar? Edgar. 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 Edgar
I don't know yet. I'm thinking about maybe retirement for my for my career. I don't know yet. Um, for this career, yeah. No, 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 no. My current career. Oh. Okay. This is a backup thing for me, to be oh. honest with you. Okay. Um, you know, a, sec a secondary type of thing that I'm pursuing for the future. Right. Um, and stuff like that. Uh, I have to weigh my options, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, you know, I I'm good where I'm at I currently, but I'm saying. This is something that I enjoy and I want to do on the side. Right. And then down the road, I'm looking at retiring from my current career and then possibly opening up a business. Uh -huh. I have to weigh my options, you know? I see, I understand. Brother in the back. Yeah, I'm starting to finish talk. And after that, I'm trying to go open my own business or something. Okay. And what's your name again? Uh, Jim. Jim? And my man in the back with the shoulders out. Right. Ray, what's going on, Ray? How you doing today? Okay. What's your three month goal? Three month or goal. three months to a year? It's a year bro. When you guys look at this board, what do you see? Opportunity. I, I see a, I see a line kind of down. Oh, the you know, lines are ever, forever, and then dots infinite. <laughs> <laughs> I see I see I see a what's your name? Huh? Yeah, Sebastian. Sebastian. Sebastian got that answer. All I see is abundance and opportunity. This was the world. That's all you have is an abundance of opportunity and space. Most of us are always caught up in what you see. It's what you don't see that really makes all the difference. If y'all haven't met me before, I'm Nason to Life, and I've been in business for about six years now. And uh, we just actually opened a location at the end of last year. Can everybody hear me all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just the end of last year. And I'm going to save you all the speech of it's been, a, you know, the struggles, the trial and tribulations, the peaks and valleys. Because at the end of the day, if you're living, you're going to go through it regardless. Right? Mm -hmm. We're going to go through it no matter what you do. No matter, even if we were making hats in here, that's what we were doing. Trial and tribulation, it comes with the territory. <clears throat> you know, but a lot of things that we go through is what we don't understand is the sacrifices you have to make. You got to do that if you want to be successful. Uh, one of my internet uh, mentors said that success is defined by the results you get. Can we agree on that? That if you don't get <laughs> the goals you set, it you know it was based on the results you 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 get. It's success. Um, Y'all mind if I sit down for a little bit? I'm just trying to relax. <laughs> it's the heat. Yeah, it's hot. <laughs> Um, so with that said, you know, what are you willing to sacrifice? What do you want? I think that's really like the biggest question people have to ask is like, what do you want out of the deal? You know, everybody wants the, the fame and the, every, the likes on Facebook or whatever, but behind that, do you know what's going on behind that? Do you know what it really means to be a boss? It's not, sometimes it's not all what it's cracked up to be for a lot of people. You know, once you really dig in deep, own your own shop. What is, how's everybody feeling here about owning this shop? I'm with it. You with it? Yeah, I'm with it. What else? What else? What else? What other goals you guys have? Tour. Tour. Huh? Tour. Tour. Get sponsored. He's the only one. As what else? Is it? I don't want him to be the only one talking. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? I know I'm not just talking to Sebastian. <laughs> You're just over to my own shop. I'm not worried about boring. I don't want to be famous. I just want to be Right. Famous. That's exactly. You know, it's everybody's perspective of what you want. You know, some people, like I said, the level of success, it's, it's all about what you want. And I think a lot of times you get caught up in the tour, but not understanding the, the sacrifice you have to make on that tour. You probably have to sacrifice your family or time or whatever. You know, that's a deep thing. Some people can't handle that. Some people want their family. You know, instead of following P. Diddy around, you know, God knows what. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that these are the things that people don't always uh, tend to, uh, you know, pay attention to. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, a lot of what we do, actually, let me get some names in here. Can we start on this end right here? Papu, Papu, Axel. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Regular dude. Regular dude? Do you have a three month goal? Do you have a three month goal? 
Yeah. Let's see three months. If you don't mind me asking. You know, staying on the right track. Better than myself. I'm just getting out of prison. I won't get out of prison. Oh. So this was one of my three months, so now I'm trying to work on another. So you stay on the right track. Oh, okay. That's great. All right, cool. Sebastian, what's your three months goal? Three months goal? Yeah. Next three months from now? Yeah. Network as much as possible, get a copyright name, and get my shares, and my fade in my phone. Yeah. yeah. It seems like it, you already working at a shop? No. No? I got a long way to go. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But you got your head in right. I got it. What about my yeah. man? Yeah. What about my man? Right. Junior. Junior. Who's trying to finish school in the next three months? Here? Who's trying to shop? Yeah. Have you, have you, were you working, uh, cutting hair before? No. Uh, this is, you learned everything here? Yeah. With the appears? Yeah. I learned, yeah, I, I never did anything like that before. How old are you? 28. 28. What's up, man? Bird, same thing. Just want to get out of here, finish school, with I'm on the spot. Brian? Do you have any, any, idea like what is the the first step of opening up your own spot as far as what you mean there's a lot of different ideas in advertisement uh, location <laughs> right uh, yeah i mean do you plan on getting out of school and then going to right into a barbershop situation or are you just right into a bar right out of school yes What's your name? Miguel. Miguel. Yeah. And I want to, uh, same thing. You got to finish school. You get in a barbershop. You get in a barbershop to yeah. work, or you want to go right out and open an island barbershop? I'm going to get the feeling of a barbershop. Right. Right. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Finish school, go to Chile. Go to where? Chile. Chile? No, that's it. Going back to Chile? Yeah, pretty much. Chile. That's it? Yeah. Open up your own spot or just you have to have the American styles that people want over there. Okay. Are you originally from here? Yeah, I'm from here in my wife's room. Uh oh. That's, that's actually smart. What's that? And you in the back, my man. Brian. Brian. My, uh, my goal is just to open up my own shop. I put my uh my wife through school a few years ago. She was a stylist on Palm Beach Island. Okay. So my goal is just to get done and open up my shop with her and but my goal is to work in another shop first before I open my own. Right. I don't want to be a crash test dummy. Right. <laughs> right, right, exactly. What about my man? Edgar. Edgar. Who's that, Edgar? Edgar. 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 What about after that? What's going on with working at a barbershop? Like what, what after that? Oh, that's the open up. Open up. Oscar. Oscar. And I just want to learn, man, as much as I can in two months. That's it? I'll take it when you graduate? And when you graduate? I mean, I'll take it from there, you know, but for now, because I just started school, so right. now I want to learn as much as I can. That's great. What about my name? Uh, my name is Chris. And uh, so we're talking about three months, or are we talking three about months, <laughs> and then <laughs> oh, no, 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 this aspect. I mean, all right. Well, basically, from three months from now, and of course, only with my skills and becoming the best I could possibly be. You know, I'm already better than where I started. So, you know, just to continue getting better, and you know, I want to feel and know that I'm better than where I was yesterday. You know, instead, I don't really make goals like I'm gonna do. All right, in the next five years, I'm gonna do this. Actually, every night I think what I want to do tomorrow, you know what I mean? Like, because I don't know. Do a little. All right, my man, I'm going to just. Go ahead, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me, I mean, look, look, man, he's living, you know what I'm saying? He's expressing himself. It might be something that you didn't think about that he's thinking about. That's all it is. Okay. 
Continue. In the same. It's like when when I think of planning something out, you know what I mean? Like I can't. I don't know. It's just for me. I can't think. All right, this is what I'm gonna do in three months. It's not. It's not gonna work for me. I actually think what I'm gonna do every moment. You know what I mean? Like I think ahead all the time right. while I'm actually living it. Right. Because you know, because I think it happen. But in three months, I mean, not in three months. When I'm finished with this, I want to get into a barbershop. You know, start off somewhere. Really understand what it means to be in that environment. Right. Because you could just jump in and start your own stuff, but you know, you can get, you know, thrown in, you know, you're, you're with the wolves. You, right. know, you don't know what it's like. You know, so you, you get in there, you know, you meet the OGs, you understand what the lifestyle is, and then, you know, from there, you know, you pick up game, and then you can start your own situation, right. and then you give game, you know, kind of give back, take in, give back. You know what I mean? Right. And so And you're in the back, my man. Um, three months goal is uh, basically just getting through school. Right. Um, future goals, um, I don't know yet. I'm thinking about maybe retirement for my for my career. I don't know yet. Um, for this career, you have no, 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 my current career. Oh. This is a backup thing for me, to oh. be honest with you. Okay. Um, you know, a, sec a secondary type of thing that I'm pursuing for the future. Right. Um, stuff like that. Uh, I have to weigh my options to be honest with you. Um, you know, I, I'm good where I'm at uh, currently, but I'm saying this is something that I enjoy and I want to do on the side. Right. And then down the road, I'm looking at retiring from my current career and then possibly opening up a business. Uh -huh. I have to weigh my options, you know? I see, I understand. Brother in the back. Yeah, start to finish talk. And after that, I'm going to try to go open my own business as well. Okay. And what's your name again? Uh, Jim. Jim. And my man in the back with the shoulders out. Ray. Ray. What's going on, Ray? How you doing today? Yeah. What's your three month goal? Three month or goal. three months to a year goal? So you, uh, save up a lot of money? Mm -hmm. How you saving up a lot of money in school, man? I'm working too. Oh, you're working too? Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's great. That's you know, at the end of the day, there's only so many ways you're going to be able to do a mohawk, blow out, scissor cut. And if you're reading your book and you're looking at each other and looking on YouTube and, you know, just being in the fit, you know, putting your 10,000 hours in, at the end of the day, you're going to come to a point of unconscious competence, second nature, all mechanics of the business. But 99% of what we do is build relationships which is basically what I was trying to engage <coughs> get you all to do. This is it. You pretty much, 99% of what you're doing is talking all day long to different people with different personalities. With three different personalities. And I'll explain, what, explain to you what I mean about three different personalities. It's who they think that they are. It's who that you perceive them to be. And then their true self. So you got all that work here. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> the original barber, right, was your, your surgeon, your stylist, your dentist, your uh, bloodlet. And at the end of the day, you know, like in the beginning of earlier cultures, he was a spiritual, religious leader in the community. You know, it's very, that's, that's influence. That's, that's very, you have to be responsible for that. You know, that, that was a belief that they had that uh, by cutting the hair, that was a way to rid the, the body of evil spirits. So that hand and touch, touching people's head all day, there's a connection right there. You catch something. I, at least in my belief, and I'm not trying to get all philosophical or religious with you or spiritual with you. What I'm saying is the reality of where you sit, people look at you as an influence, as a pillar. So the importance of the relationships you build and what un understanding what's coming out of your mouth every day, how you walk, people are always watching. At least that's what I came to understand in business, for sure. Because it's a lot of responsibility. You saying God knows what, and, and this kid sitting right here, he's like a sponge grabbing on. And you either going to move him in the right direction or move him in the wrong direction. Just you. That's a 
it's a it's a rewarding thing, but it's also a serious thing. So understand that you have the power of influence. You're like the balance of people, because everybody needs a haircut. You're next to the bartender. I think those are like the best people in the whole wide world is a bartender, your bartender, and your barber. Look good and feel good, right? I'm sorry? Look good and feel good. Look good and feel good. And it's actually, and you do both. You do both. You do more than what a, 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 a bartender can do. You can change a guy's day. They, My wife cheated on me. I lost my job. And, you know, he gets a haircut and makes all the look at himself in the mirror. It's like, yo, I can... Man, I can make it for the next day. You know what I'm saying? I can make it and wake up tomorrow and do start over. Find me another woman. Find me another woman. Yeah, your life can change from my haircut. Your life, you're changing people's <laughs> lives, man. That kid, uh, and the way that we live in the world is so superficial. You know, it's so super. Everybody's so materialistic. You got the fakers on your social media, and you know, you feel like you get a like. You feel like they really like you. No. It's what you don't see, like I said before. Not what you see. So I'm, I'm just here to just share with you all the realities of really, really understanding the crap. It's more than just cutting the camera. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. Um, I have the opportunity of working at um, hospice. I don't know if you all are familiar with hospice. I volunteered there. I patients sit. I also have the opportunity of cutting hair for patients that need it. You know, they have this for people with a terminal illness for six months to live, right? And the most rewarding thing is when they are so grateful, the appreciation that they give you for the haircut, for giving and making them feel good. They look in the mirror and they're like, it changed it. You know, they, they don't even think about their ailment. <clears throat> to me, that's worth more than the money. Now, I'm not neglecting the money. We all are in the business to make money at the end of the day, right? But all money is is just a fuel for choices by my man Dave Chappelle. It only fuels your choices. And we're all on the same level as far as choices is concerned because we're all human beings. We just all sit in different positions. Some got more fuel than others. Yeah. We're all stars in the sky. We just shine in different areas of space. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make anybody bigger or lesser or smaller or nothing. No, it's just... Based on the choices you make in life will determine the position you want to sit in. Some people want to be a celebrity barber, and that's totally fine. But understanding the balance of it and what you got to go through, you probably got to eat a lot of shit. Excuse the language. Yeah. You're going to eat a lot of shit. You're dealing with, you're almost somebody's personal assistant. When you're trying to, you got your newborn, you just had a, a newborn, at the, and then did he cause you? You gotta make a choice. And that's a hard choice after a while. You keep on, it's nice in the beginning. Because it's new, it's an experience. But now you gotta get to that point to where you gotta decide. Being a business owner, when you're working with different individuals, it's not just you working with those clients and trying to balance out your clients or build your clientele. It's also the people that you work with. If you don't like the people that you work with, you're not gonna be a happy individual. That's why you always have these barbers bouncing. You can never find a solid barber in our industry, for the most part. They bounce from shop to shop. And it's due to the environment. And also, excellence starts at the top. So I think, I believe, that that barber owner has a problem. Because he's jaded from the shops he was working at. So that's where the perpetuation of the ignorance keeps <laughs> just bring devaluing this great trade that has been here since the early beginnings, since prostitution, which I have a hard time understanding how it's prostitution and profession. Because <laughs> they make money. Because there's guys that's for me as well, so I've seen. But a professional. Oh, we all you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like I can go and uh, get a, go to, uh, Night Girl 101, like take a class for it, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, that was a, that was an ugly joke. <laughs> Nobody laughed. Yeah. Um, so right now, I just want to just open up the floor for questions. Anything in business, anything you want to know, let's try to work it out. Let's let's see what we can talk about. I made you get into this field. 
Well, why did you get into this field? Actually, I was a bartender at one point in time. And um, initially, I couldn't see myself at 50 years old bar serving anybody drink. Um, I would bartend and I would talk to different, I met a lot of people, great money, but it, it turned it not to being about the money. When I'm over here serving this guy's addiction because his wife left, and I'm serving drinks and he hops in that car, a Maserati or something, you know, and he gets in a wreck. I mean, I'm over here thinking about, am I really helping this guy move forward? No. And then on top, he's hopping in a Maserati, and I'm sitting behind a bar with a Ford F-150 truck. So I had to go figure that thing out on a personal level. Like, why is he so unhappy? So it was pretty big. And plus, I, uh, funny enough, man, I had uh, family members in it. My grandfather and uncle was in the business. But I never really ever, ever considered it until I wanted to, like, get out of the, the restaurant business and really find something that I could take ownership of. Because it was all about entrepreneurship with me. And that's the reason why I was waiting tables, because I didn't work for them. I, people were coming to see me and just, to, you know what I'm saying? So the entrepreneurial spirit was there. Yeah. So that's how I got into it. How did you get into it? Me? Yeah. Um, when I was like 14, 13, I used to like cut myself all the time, mm -hmm. like the Australia. But then I dropped it and I started doing stupid stuff on the street. And then I pick it up again. There's always been something that I wanted to do. I just kind of sidetracked from it. Right. So I'm still chopping people up left and right, scattered people, but like I I'm said, still trying to every time. Put your ten thousand hours in. That's all it is. Ten thousand hours. That's it. Funny thing about what I said. I keep saying ten thousand hours on the mechanic because it's just mechanics. But the thing they don't teach you in that book is how to build relationships or even work on personal development for yourself. Because it's a mental, you're talking about dealing with so many people, that's a lot of stress. Knowing that I've been in the restaurant business for some people bring their stress. Little Johnny is not doing good in school. And, you know, my wife is cheating on me, my husband's cheating on me, and they dump that on you. Same thing in the, in the barbershop, man. And oh, man. knowing how to, you know, distance, how to separate yourself from that situation, understanding, hey, somebody's getting at you kind of crazy is don't let them disrespect you, but also know where it's coming from. You know you didn't say nothing wrong. What are the words or what are you going to say to, to disarm this individual so you can give him a great cut and try to help him feel better about the situation? That's it. And it goes back to everybody's different. You got That goes with being in tune with the client, really wanting to understand it. One thing that I did just a minute ago, I asked everybody their name. And then I ask them a question about, you know, the, you know, what they want to do in three months. When I'm in the barbershop, I ask them how they feeling, or I ask them about, hey, what's your occupation, or how you feel, how you feeling today is a really great one, because they're gonna, that's how it's gonna let you know or gauge, you know, how you should go <laughs> with the direction of the conversation. If they give you, they give you the standoff, you know, what I'm saying you're not gonna be able to connect with everybody. You're not gonna want to connect with everybody either, especially if you. Cutting all day, you get irritated. It's like, yo, I'm tired. You know, it's, it's almost comes to that limit like, yo, I'm making too much money. You're never making too much money, but it's <laughs> pounding you all day. You're like, yo, I just want to go home, dog. Why are you coming in at 7.55? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Reality of the situation and how you deal with that. Hey, 7.55, look, brother, look. It's 7.55. I'm going to get you today, but the next time, you know, try to call me. Let me know. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to go home and be with my kid and this and that. And, you know, I understand you got your thing, but I understand where I sit at, too. Any other questions? What's the average hours uh, of Barbara works in a day? Um, <clears throat> I think it varies. Um, it depends on... Yeah, what's the income? Huh? What's the income? income? It, you know what it goes to? Yeah. Regular, you know what I mean? Just the average. I mean, you can, depending on the... Uh, the, the amount of what they're charging for the haircuts, I mean, you can probably work an eight hour day. You know what I'm saying? You can, work it out, you can work it out to where you work in an eight hour day, especially if, but it goes back to building up your clientele and having a consistent clientele coming in that's going to see you between those hours. You know, but when you're first starting out, I know from a personal experience, I was working seven days 
Some of just it was eight to eight Monday through Saturday, twelve to four on Sunday. I didn't lift up, and I, my skills weren't were not par, you know. But I was just in there, just sitting and being in the atmosphere, of, or always just being there. You know, I think Tuesdays was the slowest day, and um, I would sit there all day and catch my catch. One end up catching two cuts by the end of the night. But that's how much I was really, but I built that day up to so much to where I was booked at six to eight, <coughs> three to eight, you know, kind of working my way back. A couple times I stayed till 10 just because I needed it, you know, but that, that's the sacrifice I was willing to make to get what I wanted. You know, mm -hmm. kind of like if you want to lose weight, you got to give up the chocolate cake, mm -hmm. period. Right. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You gotta, but you, it, it's only you. You gotta determine that. You can't expect to be successful in this business if you're gonna show up at three one day and show up at eight the next day and then don't come in another day. You gotta develop a line of consistency. You gotta be reliable. And you gotta be dependable on yourself first. If you don't show up time for, if you don't show up on time for yourself. How do you expect anybody else to show up on time for you? Period. You got to show up on time for you. Nobody says you got to wake up at 5 in the morning, but if you can give a consistent 12 to 8, people will show up for that. You got to be consistent, though. There is no, oh, I got to go, you know, pay a bill, or oh, I just forgot it. No, it's not going to work that way. You know, it doesn't work that way. Other than the word of mouth, how else do you network? Word of mouth. Um, Other than that. Okay. Word of mouth is the best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it takes yeah. time, but it is the best. But um, actually, everywhere I go, um, now, the thing is, is that I don't care where I'm at. I'm at the store. I'm at the whatever. I give them a card. And usually I have a t-shirt on. So people started asking after a while. But I did hit up certain events, like when you're out in the, even if when you're in the club, I always have a card. Boom. You strike up a conversation in the store. Oh, yeah, boom, I'm over here. So just in your day-to-day, -day, I think that's the easiest approach. Now, at the beginning, I'll take, like on that Tuesday I was telling you about, mm -hmm. I was staying there all day, but I consistently, for two hours on a Tuesday, I went to, a, to the closest, um, I went to all the businesses and I went to all the apartment building, buildings and just promoted the shop. Mm -hmm. So I believe in energy. So I believe I don't know if anybody from those places ever came in the door, but I end up getting busy all of a sudden to the point to where I couldn't do it anymore. So that's when I knew I was doing, I was on to something. When I started getting busy and I couldn't take that two hours and go pass out flyers at an apartment or whatnot, that's when I know it was, it was getting better for me. Other than Facebook, how do you promote yourself online? I gotta be honest with you guys, man. I, I rarely pump. I did the whole Facebook in the beginning, and it just got it turned into a job. So when it turned into a job, I wanted so. But um, on just to just to you know answer your question, it's just regular, just Facebook and Instagram, and all the regular medias. You know, all social media. Just media. the social media. Instagram's your best bet, bro. Yeah. 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 Follow, I agree. Follow all barbers. Yeah. 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 Follow anybody else. Follow Shea Barbers. Yeah. I agree. agree. They work. The end them. Mm -hmm. And there's 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 certain like hashtags you can put certain like uh, marketing schemes you can add to it to make it better. Hashtag. But the way you want to do it is like I said, <laughs> it's pointless if nobody's coming to see. If they just liking you just because they like the pic. If they're not coming to see you, exactly. It doesn't make any logical sense to me personally. I mean, you gotta sharpen your skills. I mean, you're messing up somewhere. Of course. Yeah. You're right. Hey, sir, I have a question for you. How long did it take you from the transition period? Um, transition period? Like when I was working on a Tuesday? No, no, no. Bartender, you switched to barber, owning your own shop, school. That's what I'm talking about, transition wise. Um, actually, um, I was initially in music at one point in time, and I was trying to get out of the restaurant business to to pursue music and I had to figure out a flexible way to give me the same amount of money so I could do the music thing. But I went to school and learned that this was an actual business that I could really... Right. You had your business for six years, I said, right? Right. 
before that? How long did it take you to transition into your business? Honestly, I went straight into business. Right out of school? Right out of school. I had an That's opportunity. tough, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, man, I went straight. I don't suggest that to anybody, to be honest with you. You know? Um, if I could have did it different, I would That's what I was talking about earlier, about weighing my options. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're doing it right by going to get into a shop and learning little by little certain right. things. But no, I went straight in. So yours was sink or swim pretty much. Sink or swim. Okay. But I had the time to do it. I wouldn't do it at my age. You know what I'm saying? You gotta play. If you're young at 18 or whatever, you have some time to kill, then you got it. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't suggest it to anybody, but if you got that kind of time, do it. But I you know, I just I just was really fortunate. I had a great person like my partner was a great individual that saw, you know, something other than and saw my, my vision, because that's really where it starts. What kind of vision do you have? You have a business partner? Yeah. How does that go? It's a challenge. Right. It's a marriage. You gotta marry this person. <laughs> that's right. Period. You gotta marry this person. You know, at the end of the day, for it to work. And both of you guys gotta find that level of understanding. You're, you're totally different. I have a fortunate position to where he doesn't cut hair. So that's a great position to be in because he can't tell you what you need to do. And you can't really tell him where his position is at too much. You kind of got to find things and delegate the workload. You know whose strengths and weaknesses are, which is something that you're going to work on throughout. The, you're going to always continue to, have, continue to have to work on this thing. Any other questions? I have a question. Yeah. Did you ever take any like business classes or uh, online courses <coughs> to, to find out more information on, on business? So YouTube. Just YouTube? <laughs> yeah, YouTube and experience. You know, I did take a uh, like a weekend course and I went to a couple shows, which is one thing that I want to bring up. These shows, right? It's all great that they have the, the little show, the cutting and the barber, blah, blah, blah. But the one thing that I, I took interest in was what they were telling me business-wise. And when I went to all the shows, they hardly had any business. But this one particular show I went to in Fort Lauderdale had a great business class. And no barbers were in it. It was only salon women, white women. You understand what I'm saying? To be exact. I was the only black African American sitting in there with a bunch of white women. But I learned so much, and that's what actually put me into the going to the class. He had a weekend class that I did. If you want to look him up, his name is John Gonzalez, he's out of California. But he was a great in, influential individual at that time period. So still a learning process of all of this. Business changes every day. Everybody can't tell you. They can only tell you, you know, what worked for them, but they can't really tell you what works for you. That makes any sense? That makes 100% of sense. Yeah. Because you got accountants that go to school to be accountants. Right. Bro. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? So you, it's either in you or it's not. You got to keep that fire burning. Yeah. Is yours yeah. a salon or a barbershop? It's a barbershop. barbershop. Straight up barbershop. You're not dealing with no women. <laughs> no, we have a couple of lady clients. Like, actually, I have a couple of lady uh, barbers that work with me. How many barbers work on you? With me. With you. Right. Yeah. Uh, we have. That was good that you said that. Yeah. I like that. Um, about four or five at one shop, and three at other. Probably seven total. So we have two shops. Two shops. Are they located? One is on Kachobi, just east of the Turnpike, and the other one is just right here next to the YMCA off of Congress, Palm Springs. Oh, wait. Yeah, I live right next to you, man. I live on Liberty. Oh, okay. Oh, just right at the light. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've been meeting the bar window. I don't know the shop. Right. What's the name of the barbershop? I do a cuss barbershop. I do a cuss Yeah. So you've opened up two, six years. Well, no. One is that the one in West Palm Beach has been open for six years. This one we just opened up at the end of last year. Right. Two businesses for all. Yeah, two businesses. That's pretty good, though. Yeah, yeah, six years? Yeah. So just a, you know some food for thought. My three month plan is to to open up uh, <laughs> another, one. another one. No, not another. One. Southern Maine. Another one. That DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah, right? I love that man. Yeah, no. Um, no, but I mean barber. <coughs> I mean that's like my three month goal right now. But my year to two year goal is about opening up three more. 
you know, my five year to, to, to become one of the best barbershops in Florida. You know, five to ten, twenty years, I want to become the best barbershop in the United States. And if I want to keep continuing to do it, international. What are you doing if that's happening? Becoming, coming up with a great plan. <laughs> like duplicating, I learned how to duplicate the process. When you opened up your second shop, what did you do to like the, the opening? Did you do anything special? Did you open Actually, we're still in the process of that. I mean, we're trying to work through some paperwork and stuff. We hadn't really did a did a uh, yeah. official grand opening, right. you know, because I was missing barbers and trying to find that level of consistency. Because you know, we just we didn't, we're not getting no loans or anything. We're just coming out of straight pocket just to you know try to yeah. to and like I said, it's a learning experience for me. So all I'm learning how to do is duplicate what we did at the other barbershop. So it's all duplication. You know, everything, things that we did at that barbershop is not necessarily going to work at this one, but just finding those little tweaks and, you know, just trying to fine tune it, you know, to, to fit for that area. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, man. I'm looking at it. I'm ready, man. So, uh, keep on mind asking this. How much do you, how much do you guys charge at your barbershop? For, for weekly booth rent? No, no, I'm talking about if your customer's here. Oh, uh, we we charge a uh, fifteen to twenty five, uh, depending on you know the service. If it's a regular cut, it's fifteen. If it's faithful, I go on seventeen. If you add it up, twenty one to twenty five. However you want to do it, then I'll give it to you. What about but we week? also have huh? No, 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 no. We also have specials. Because you always got those slow periods, so we have a special on a Wednesday. We do a lot with, you know, uh, the community with the eight dollar with the senior citizens as a community hall. We give uh, complimentary haircuts uh, with the kid with children that make all age complimentary haircut. Uh, military discounts, you know what I'm saying? So all these things, if you sell it, you don't have a problem making money. You know what I'm saying? So, like, money is not the real going to be the real issue. It's how great of a person are you? You know what I'm saying? Are you going to utilize the, the tools that are given to, to do what you got to do? To are you a firm believer that money, uh, if you're in it for the money, you're not going to make it? Yeah. If you're in it for the money, you're not going to make it. And the reason why I say that is, is that it's a level of passion that you have to have. To, well, I'm not, you know what, let me kind of tweak what you, what I'm saying. Like I said, money is the fuel for choices. So there has to be a drive right there. <clears throat> but there's going to come a level of what I was talking to you about is whether, man, my newborn is here or do I need to go out here and get this money? I got to make, I got to be in a position to make this choice. You know what I'm saying? If I made enough money to save Forget that money, I'm going to be with my kid. That's the position I want to be in. I don't want to be in a position like, yo, if I don't get this money, I can't pay this doctor bill. Two different ways to look at it, you know. Question for you, sir. Yes, sir. Um, as in any career, when you went to school, you know, school, school, whatever. You graduate, but when you get out there in the field, as in any career, you realize really you don't know shit. I'll tell you about that. Right. So... When you go out there and you're in the real world now, right. and things like that, at two point, when you finished yours and you went straight into into business, was that an issue? And um, and also, you say you need barbers, things like that. What happens when you get somebody who's coming into your shop and they just got out of school and obviously they're green, what behind the ears? I'm yeah. talking with with regards to the, the you know with barbering, for example, they just got their license, mentorship, things like that, or things you offer there or no? That's what I want to offer. It makes more sense that way to me. Because I look for, I don't want you bouncing in and bouncing out. You know, if you're coming in just to make your money and bounce out, you need to go find, there's a bunch of barbershops doing that. Doing right, that right. thing. Me, I'm looking for the longevity. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that wants to grow and see a vision and see something in yourself to, to, to step on the platform and grow. To whether or not you want to go out and do your own thing which I'm all for that because the more leaders we have out here, the better that have some, a sense of integrity in life about them. 
that's the latest I want, you know what I mean? Or even if you want to join in with the, with, I said I got, a, I want to open up shops. So if you want to become a part of that dream, that's totally fine too. But I, I really, I want to just bring more like-minded people together to grow. I think that's really what the world needs at the end of the day. It's a world movement, a world organization, a world idea of that, of enlightenment. It's really my direction. I have a question for you. Yeah. So like, I, I've put a lot of thought into the shop ownership, entrepreneurship. I've thought about building a team and offering all, some of them all a piece of the company to make them all buy in and be invested. Okay. Yeah. Is that something you would agree with or is that something you would disagree with because of now there's too many chefs in the kitchen? No, man. I think that, they, you know, if you, if you are, especially the reason why we got legal paper, legal contracts now, right? So that would kind of save you in that area. But on top of that, it's, I would think it would be better that you do it. You can't do it all yourself. So if you can put yourself in a position to, to build up a group of men, which is the reason why I would want to mentor somebody. You understand what I'm saying? Right. It makes more sense. I can't mentor somebody that already knows. Right. And that's usually what happens when these barbers get out into the industry. They already know everything. So it's hard to teach them, to show them a different way after they've seen the money. So in your position is to groom an individual up to manage one of your shops. Then groom them in a position to buy in with you. But it goes back to whether this guy, if he thinks too much or if he thinks a lot, he might want to do his own thing and you kind of just want to be like, okay, well, wish you the best. I'll help you any way I want to, do, you know, any way and I wish you the best, but let's, let's join, let's, let's join some, let's do a joint venture or something. You know, you can always keep the relation, the thing is keeping the relationship. It's really what it's about. And at the end of the day, some people, once they start to touch their feet, their feet in the business and dealing with people and dealing with the landlord and pipes break and this guy trying to run off with my rent, I would think that they want to probably ride with somebody to save them some of that, that BS. Right. One more question. What's your thoughts on straight barbershop versus like a salon atmosphere where you're catering to, to both men and women? Um, you know what? I'm really, I'm going to put it like this. I don't want to deal with salons, personally. I want to try to create a balance of bringing this barbershop thing back. I want to make more money, of course, but guys are buying too now. Right. So I really want to catch that wave and create an atmosphere. Like our atmosphere at our barbershop is pretty family oriented, but you know, once everybody's out of the room and it's just guys in there, we kind of say what we want. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? A barbershop, <laughs> man. If you got a woman in there, you always got to be censored in some form or fashion. And everybody's so, you know, socially okay. sensitive, it's like crazy sometimes. And even you jump in the shop in the first place. Right. Is that true for a a lot of circumstances, or are there barbershops out there that understand and that's kind of their breeding ground to kind of groom their own barbers to I kind of do one. things their work? I know one. Well, I know, but I mean, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> in general, know. not just you. I mean, honestly, man, I'm, I'm so involved in what I do, man. Um, I don't know any other ones doing what I do or what we do. I don't. I mean, I know a couple people or whatever, but not doing what we do. All right. That's why we're called I Do That's Barbershop. And I just leave it like that. Respect to everybody else that's doing the thing. You know, we see you, the, you know, we see you, but you know, that we got going, I'm just focused on what we got going on. I hear and that so much. Day. I'm not trying to babysit. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, how do you ever expect to? But I ain't trying to get that. I feel like I'm just saying, saying I'm just you're a you graduated and you got your license for a reason because you know how to cut. Well, no, that's not true. You graduated and I know how to cut. But the thing is, is that you, like me, when I first, I went, my skills weren't tight, you know what I'm saying, when I got out of school. I actually learned more when I was in school and looking at YouTube and the whole nine. But I was also running a business at the same time, too. So it was, de that's what I'm saying. You're trying to learn your skill and trying to learn a business at the same time. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's not the best situation to be in. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great situation. You know, a lot of ups and downs. You know, when you're trying to encourage somebody to do the right thing, they're going to be contrary because they don't want to. They don't want to hear it coming from a person like myself. 
And it wasn't about the skill of the buyer. I'm talking about just relating to your client. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because you're in the shop anyway, so they got to pay. Right. Your Not initially. In the beginning, I didn't. I oh. was managing it. Oh, okay. I I'm at own position now. Oh. But I'm saying, but the management position with a guy with no skills, <clears throat> yeah, that's right. I'm still sitting in a in an ownership type. Gotcha. Why the hell he? Right, 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 right. Who are you? Yeah, exactly. But oh, what's going on? I mean, but couldn't you kind of understand that though? Because when you say do the right thing, that could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Like. If some just, just if someone someone could completely disagree with how you run things, but they could achieve the same level of success or right. even higher, but but that's like, why there's other shops. What I'm saying is like, like this. Look, look like this. When I'm and, and me, I'm like more like a you no. Know, can you do this? But when you when when uh, certain people come into the room and you're cussing and saying whatever kind of conversation well, I, with you, I, I, I should that. pull you to the side and say, hey man, there's a better way to do this. Okay, I understand that. You understand what I'm saying? Or, hey, we all use this restroom. Y'all can't keep the restroom clean? We can't clean, like I'm cleaning it all the time. Like I don't mind, I'll sweep the, I still sweep the floor today. But, you know, it's just certain things. Like my mom could walk into the restroom and then you want to give me a situation Ready to fight me for what? Like, come on, man. Let's be real about it. At your house, let's let's see if we took it to your house. And I was doing that. How would you feel about Southern it? Southern bars would be great. You know, it, it was situational. Right? <laughs> like I said, man, I just wanted an opportunity. I was really in it, just ambitiously seeing. I saw what I wanted when I was in school. I wrote a business vision of what I wanted when I was in school. So when I saw the opportunity, I seized it. I didn't look at my environment. I didn't understand no what was going on. I was just a passionate barber with no skills. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Built everything and you know what? It was worth you know, it was worth it because by the choices I've made, I'm sitting right here. You know, you know what the, we've had other instructors here in the past that uh, yeah. own shops and they told us that some of their barbers that they have in their shops working for them, so with them, like you said, mm -hmm. um, some of the more successful ones they said are the ones that they don't really cut the greatest hair. They said, but their their people mm -hmm. skills are really good, and those are those are, those are the ones that make you make the best. True, point. true story. Yeah, so. and that's that's what I was saying to you before. Getting in tune with your client, you understand? When you know your client, hey man, last time you was in here, man, you said you had foot surgery. How that going? Just by you asking that simple question, they're like. You care. You remember. Yeah, you remember. <laughs> you remember my name. You remember. Remembering names is probably about the easiest thing you can do. You cut somebody once, you get their name, they come back in. Hey, what's going on, John? How you doing? And you're like, what? John? Man, I got to go sit with that guy. And he probably banged me up the last time. Just because you remembered their name. Think about when you go into a bar and somebody remembers what drink you had. I don't know for those who drink. I don't know, but I'm just saying. That that's um, that was the that's one of those skills that you just develop over time. So I can see that. One all my clients. You know, <coughs> did you write a business plan? When you opened the business? I've wrote. I've written plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and still, you have to go back. Is you know, in the process of writing a new one, just because this new shop, this new idea, just always you're always gonna. You feel like putting ideas out on paper keeps you refreshed, right? Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. And that's a big thing. You know, you got your three month goals, year goals, or whatever. Write this stuff on paper. Right about, how, how, carry it around with you. For a student, how would you describe to them uh, an ideal business plan that you would uh, write out for them? Like you mentioned, the three month goal, right? That's, right. So that'd be like your first step. Or can you elaborate a little more on that? On, how on the business plan, or just setting out what you want? A business plan, for instance, like how many sections of the business plan? What, what, oh, it's what, a lot. It's like executive summary. If you're talking about really stand up, I mean, there's a bunch of templates about that. Yeah, exactly. I heard it's not supposed to be more than 40 pages. And more than 40 it's pages is like a lunch. I tell you what, I'm in a position doing mine, and I got. I went really? to. If you want to go to elance.com, you can hire somebody to write your business plan up. Elance. Elance.com. And hire somebody to rock it, you know what I'm saying? I did it myself and it didn't come out right. I had people look at it, this and that. And I'm, it just, you know, that's not my area, that's not my lane, <laughs> really, because I'm more of an action type individual, you know? And um, I'd rather, you know, give some other small business the money to, to do it once you get there. And uh, one thing I want, you was talking about business, right? One thing that you guys, 
want to have is a lawyer and an accountant. Once you make your money, once you get a position, <coughs> and that takes time because you're dealing with so many, especially here in Florida, so many scammers or whatever. Everybody just out to get your pockets. And the way that I met my accountant and my lawyers is because they're clients that come to the barbershop. They either refer you to somebody. So that's, that's the importance of building relationships. You get anything you want, pretty much. Hey, I, I need a mechanic, man. You know, oh, yeah, my cousin, or this and that, or whatever. That's usually the, the lingo that you want to, because you know what you need. Two things for business people, a great accountant and a lawyer. People that you can actually trust and build a relationship with. A lot of times you got a lot of small business um, individuals, uh, small business accountant, not too big. They're trying to build their business as well, and, and um, small business type lawyers. And you just, just finding that quality and that balance with them, but it's almost like y'all could all grow together in time. Go, going back to that sink or swim era there. Yes, sir. How long did it take you? Pretty much. I, mean, I know you were, you know, you were, you were networking and all that stuff, and, and doing. You know, building up your clients and all that, but you just jumped right into it. How long did it realistically take you to, to get where you where you were surviving comfortably? And did you have a backup plan financially? No, no backup plan financially. It's out there. Straight, it's out there. Straight doing it. So you're a single guy, you live at home, you've got, or you've got a family. And no, I don't have it, and that's, that was another little kicker yeah. right there. No family, okay. and a single you. guy, pretty much. I like just recently. But, uh, you know, I had a relationship, but no, no, but you know what? I'm but saying. I was, I wasn't. I'm talking about no children, the, no, no real responsibilities. All I had was this is my baby, the shop. Gotcha. Okay. You know, so I work, I work that. That's where I sit currently. <laughs> that's why you say you wouldn't recommend it to obviously, you know, somebody with a family, you no know, bills, you know, no, mortgage, you know, at all. That's bad business advice. Right. right. You know, really set, really set your markets, really plan it out. I just set in a position to where I was able to make that choice. Gotcha. You know, and I almost wish it, I could have did some other stuff when I was younger. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's all that you know. Time catches up. They say it's never too late, and it's never too late. <laughs> but it goes back to what you say. I say again. What are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah. You want to jump out there? Well, you're gonna your, your wife and your kids is gonna get upset. Period. That's just the, you better hope they get upset. Huh? Get upset yeah, but it'll be even more. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's what's important to you. What's important to them? If they understand, go for it. Shoot it. Knock it out the park. Shoot past it. Any other one? What's that? She wants that new Louis? Break your ass up. Quality, yes. right. So, uh, 
For one question I want to say, you know, banging somebody up, I'm just not really going to let that happen too often. <laughs> well, you no, know no, what I'm saying? Okay, we're going to one, two, three. But if, yeah, if, 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 if you feel like you got a new barber in the shop and he feels like, hey, you know what, I'm struggling a little bit here. And he, we're going to help I'm him. Uncom I'm uncomfortable with the point where I don't think I can turn to anybody else in the shop. That's gonna make and me, that's not a problem. That's you understand? Know you don't want to be there. Yeah, and the <laughs> thing is, is that it goes back to who you want to hire and, and create an environment to where you feel comfortable. A lot of barbershops aren't comfortable. A lot of barbershops is like, but you got your food. What do you got to prove? What do you, you're not on my level, son. You understand what I'm saying? But in, I, in the bar, that goes back to the people I want to be around me. Because you got to be around these people all day long. I don't want to be around somebody I don't like. <laughs> Period. So, great vibes, man. If I, I'm just, I don't want to be around somebody I don't like, man. It's just not, it's like, I got to take it home with me. You know what I'm saying? I can't just. You gotta find a way. It's almost like you live there. You're spending so much time there. Then your family. Yeah. What about the prices? What are you guys charging at the shop? You already told us. What was it? 15, 20, 25, depending on the cut. For regular? 15, 25. What's your phone away? Yeah. Tax? I got another question. I got a second part to that question. I'm sorry? Do you think that the prices should go up? Um. I think we sit very competitive with the prices that we have. I don't want to be that shop like charging a ridiculous like, amount. Of, as a community. Yeah, like everybody. Like for a barber coming out of, I think 15 is good for a barber coming out of school. Yeah. But do you think that those prices should remain the same, or do you think that there's a chance for it to like, fluctuate in the near future? That's a charge theory. I feel like it's just not like time. No, I mean. Because I mean, I'm talking to you because I know you're a business owner and you have two shots. Right. So what would, what would you uh, kind of like input on that? Like, just to I want, want like, I, like I said, I want to stay by the state that's me. So they are stacked. You know what I'm saying? Like, the 17 for the fades, I feel like that they they do. I'm just saying, you need to Google. I feel like that they do. I want to make sure that we we are being able, like, the community can afford it. You know what I'm saying? Like, be, be very competitive and reasonable. Because at the end of the day, if you do a great job and you do quality work and create those relationships, people will throw you 30 on 15. You understand what I'm saying? I really want to challenge the price market on, in that and really see, you know, I, that's why I give the specials. That's what, you know what I mean? And, so so you would say that's, that's a good strategy that you've used to create your, your longevity in business. That's, that's it. That's, that's the key right there. That's it. That's key. You know what I mean? Like charging a ridiculous amount of money. And this is all I hear. And the thing is that I listen to the people that come to the shop. They're always talking about some other shop did this, or some other shop is doing that, or this and that. And if you listen to your clients, <coughs> or the clients or the people that come in, you kind of figure out where you want to adjust, you know, personally. You know what I'm saying? You're seeing somebody talking like, yeah, I went to my last barber shop. Man, he was late. He was doing this. He was, man, he left me in the chair. He forgot about it. Well, I know I'm going to win with this client because I'm going to, hey, look, I'm going to be on time, bro. You ain't got to worry about it. He's your client for life because that's all he wants. He wants you to show up on that. And put you on the long way cut my hair. Boom. You're here. 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 You're based on just your personality itself or a combination of your personality and the fact that you were in that position and you don't forget where you came from is what I'm talking about. Um, both. I'm both. I don't forget where I came from and that probably goes all the way down to maybe before I was in the industry. You know what I mean? Well, no you don't know what I mean. What I'm saying is, is that I'm not the one that's going to keep passing on the same ignorance. Right. I'm with do my best to try to see it another way. If I if I if I if somebody did me wrong, I'm not gonna feel good about going and doing somebody the same way that they did me. I wanna be like, you know what, I'm gonna be better than that. I'm gonna show that there's a better way. There's some pain and struggle in there. Right. <laughs> ask Gandhi, ask Buddha and ask Jesus. You know, they'll tell you about that. These quote unquote servants. You know what I mean? 
but it's a, it's, a, it's a high price of being a servant. Nothing wrong with it. Come on. I decided to be a servant. We'll okay. serve the people. What made you want to come in here and talk to us today? Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I also want to get back. I just wanted to challenge the room thing because this is where it starts at. Once you get out into the field, and once you go to a barbershop that burns you out, you tend to carry that mentality on and on and on. I've seen it, I see it happen throughout the six years. It happens all the time. A jaded barber from a jaded business owner. And you carry that same bad habit into a situation. Yeah. And then you're seeing something that's clear, and now you don't trust it anymore because you don't know what a, a good situation looks like. <coughs> kind of like when you're in a relationship with your woman. You a good dude, and she talk about all the bad guys she been with, and you've been trying to be the best person towards her, and she still can't because she, she feel like, oh yeah, you got to be cheated. You way too good. Same you. situation. We all do that in the same situation. But doesn't that give you the right though? What's that? Oh, no. but what he said, yeah. But I'm saying, no, I didn't. You know what I mean? Any other questions? No, no, no. Thank you for. Um, oh, I got a question for you. Did yeah. you buy an existing shop or you started from ground zero? Uh, we bought into an existing shop. That's why I had all the problems with the barbers that were there. Okay. Oh, you took over. Yeah, we all took. We took over. Did you That's have fine. to eventually, honestly, start weeding out? It is what it is. Right? Yeah, weed yeah. it out, man. Yeah. And you know, they went out on their own. They were yeah. Fire. They were fire. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Time in this thing, and that's why I said, don't jump out here and do it. You, you have, if you prepare, you have enough time as you need. Timing is everything. Right. Timing is everything. Just knowing yourself, understanding your choices and your options. Excuse me. How do you feel about multitasking? <clears throat> um, you got to. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it to the play to the to the position that it stresses you out. But in some levels, it's necessary. If you can handle it, man, it's necessary. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a challenge when you multitasking is I got to pick my kid up and then I got an appointment at 8. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a level of multitasking. Like, I got to, how do I balance my personal life and my business life? So that's a challenge in and of itself. How much time do you usually give between appointments? Um, right now, man, I'm so busy, I don't even have any time. It's straight up. It's either appointment or walking is coming in. Do you have a day off? I try. <laughs> I don't believe it. When you have a day off, you should just pop everything off and just take that day off. True story. Yeah. I want to work on that myself. I need to. I'm, I'm, not, I'm a hypocrite towards it. I try to tell these guys in the shop, like, take a day off or whatever. But, you know, I'm to an extent, I'm a workaholic, you know. Have you ever uh, managed it from... Uh, uh, commission type base versus the booth rentals. I like you know what the balance, the balance is between both. Yeah, are you experimenting? Yeah. No, I, mean, I don't. I don't like it because I hear you know the pros and the cons of each side, so that's why I'm asking. I don't, I don't like the the whole commission thing. Right. I, I hear they you know as, the, as an owner they can steal from you. There's a lot of that going on and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I have to watch you too much. Gotcha. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I really don't want each other, right? I don't want to, have to feel like I gotta watch anybody. You, know, exactly. you say you in here, you a stand up dude. Be a stand up guy, right, right. and pay your rent. And then I don't have to, you know. It really actually empowers you to take responsibility and accountability for yourself and do what you gotta do. Does everybody do it? Does everybody do it with me? No. But they're learning. As long as you're learning, you know, it's it's all the learning experience. <coughs> Knowing that, man, I need to get here on time. Or I need to set a straight time for myself. I can't expect to leave early and not make any money. You know what I'm saying? Really just gauging yourself in that. So uh, I think the booth rent is good. You know? It really puts you in a position to challenge yourself. You know what you got every week? And, and what? The booth rent. You know how much money you can have? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. In. yeah. Versus, well, you only got two guys. Um, as far as the sick for example scenario, you got like, I don't know, let's just say two barbers. One is mediocre and one is, he got everybody lined up. Do you charge him the same or do you feel like because he's better than the other one, you should charge him more for the chair? 
No. Because you're happy. No, no, no. Same. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? If, if anything, like I said, you know, inflation is real. Right. We just go on the boot ramp. And everybody got it. Everybody. Yeah. Are you okay to only the shoppers? We do the credit card, two dollar service charge. <laughs> right. And square? Square. Everybody has a square. We also have a terminal in there, but for the most part, I encourage people to get your square. If you get your money, all you gotta do is give me your cash and we're straight. You keep all your money. <laughs> I mean you could be making a million dollars behind the chair if you want to. But it's more about the business. And like I said, I wanna Build leaders. I want to build partners rather than some employee. Like the employee thing, I'm just not with it. You know, and a lot of people carry that employee mindset into the barbershop. Like, oh, you know, I'm not making any money. Y'all need to. No, bro. That's the reason for the booth rent. You know, people need to come and see you at Ideal Cuts Barbershop. Sebastian, like, yo, if you out marketing like it, people are going to come in to see you. That's your money. Okay, cool. Or it's the shops. Whatever. I don't know, but. The thing is, is you, it's up to you. You should want to build your clientele. Yeah, we've heard war stories about some of these shops where the owner is like, like you say, you know, we're not doing it. It's just the pressure, you know, putting on the barbers and things like that. You know, I've heard from students that have, yeah. yeah, not not good stories is what I'm trying to say. Well, it goes back to what I'm saying. The reason why I hang, put the prices where they need to be and why I have the specials and why I have all these tools or I don't want to say I. We, we have all these tools that are set in a place that if you are being a great person, if you are relating to people and selling yourself, mm -hmm. you don't have a problem making your rent because you're like right, right, right. You don't have a problem with that. You shouldn't have a problem with that. I know a lot of those war stories right there, they're not giving out no specials either. It's straight up $30 cuts. Right. And that's the reason why that's the challenge of the $30 cut. People are going to the people that can, you know, the people that are going for those thirty dollars are the ones that can afford it. But not a lot of people can afford that. The majority of us are middle class, you know, trying to make it. You talking about a single mother affording a twenty dollar, twenty five dollar cut for a son? You know, it, that's three hours worth of work. It's well, crazy. Work. Crazy talk. You know what I'm saying? In my eyes, right now, it's crazy talk. But, now, don't get me wrong. Like, if I want in the situation that I have with Ideal Cuts Barbershop. But if I was to open up a man shop again, you know, like a more of a man, gentleman, masculine with cigars and wine or whatever, okay, now I can see the prices. Yeah. I can see the 30 to 50. We give me a, a cigar and some whiskey. Somebody did. And we're downtown. We're not in the hood with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're downtown with the, with the whole movement. Okay, now I see those prices. But charging 50, that's, that's, that's not, that's exploiting your community. Would not even getting personal mind. with what you make or, or what your barbers make, what can an average barber make if you can throw a roundabout figure, let's say, at your shop? Baby, start now. I'm going to give it to you like this. There was a statistic that was done in uh, February 3rd, 2015. Uh, at your shop? No, no, no. Oh, in general. In general. Okay. For every one barber, there's 850 people, like 840 people. So anybody got their smartphone? Do a calculator for me. Calculate for me. Do uh, 840 divided by 30, which is 30 days. 28, 28, 28, 28 people. 28 people times, let's just say 20. 560? Times 7. Times four. Times twelve. Twenty-eight. A year. Jeez. But you're not going to service eight hundred and forty people, but that gives you the possibility of servicing eight hundred and forty people. So that's some simple math. So how much are you willing to get? Do I want to cut twenty-five a day? You need ninja days off. That's working thirty days. Nobody's working 30 days, but I'm saying right, right, right. do the calculations mm -hmm. on what the possibility is. Gotcha. That's that abundance I was talking. Don't talk about what you see, what you don't see. I put it in my mind when I was working in the restaurant business, I'm gonna make a hundred dollars no matter what. I'm making a hundred dollars every time I come to work. Anything after that is extra. Right, right. Period. Oh, you don't see it. Well, the Wright brothers didn't see. You know, nobody saw that the Wright Brothers was making this aluminum to have it flying through the sky, but 
it's almost like taboo if you haven't been on a plane before. That, my friends, is called faith in yourself. That's what I'm saying. Faith and believe in your firm believer of other attraction. True story. Work on it every day. Read about it, believe it, live it. That's it. So all these, these stories that y'all had, the, the questions, it's good, it's great, you're getting it out. This is the, but a lot of people are not giving you the answers like this. You know what I'm saying? saying? They kind of hide information because they're scared. Oh, if I give them this, they're going to try to. competition. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the thing, and knowledge is free, man. Let's do it. And help me get out of here, man. Get on out of here, man. All right, I'm going. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? You have a lot of problems coming to your shop? Yeah. Um, not so much as the new one that's coming, but the one I'm gonna show you guys. Yeah. Are you saying why is that Arnold Kachobi? Arnold Kachobi just east of the turnpike. I'm gonna stop. Oh, by the uh, Duffy's and Longhorn somewhere in that No, it's where it's, it's uh, Chick fil A. Just oh, right by the Chick fil A and the pawn shop. Well, the queen of what used to be. No, not the there, but the yeah. shell station that sits right there. Next to the gas station? Yeah. Yeah. That's your shop? Right next to the gas station. I used to go there all the time. Oh, you did? Yeah, he used to have a cube and do a little TV before he did. Yeah, man, actually, Tommy, he opened up his own shop, man. That's what I do, man. Any other questions? Y'all sleeping? Just your car. My car? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Nope. Hey, I had a great I had a great time with you guys, man. I learned from y'all just as much. I hope you learned from me because I know I learned from you guys, man. So. Please.